Alrighty. Cook it with tea. Banana pudding French toast. What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cooking with Tea. We are back and we are better and it is my favorite time of the year, brunch season. I mean, the sun is shining, mimosas and bottles are bubbling, okay? And brunch is where it's at. Today we're gonna be making my banana pudding French toast. I mean, can we get into it? Vanilla wafer crunch, creamy pudding on the inside. And look at those banana slices. It don't get no better than this. Let's get into it. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna make our pudding. So. I'm gonna pop in some milk. Honestly, I 100% recommend making your pudding from scratch. Like classically, we love the box jello banana pudding vibes, but it's gonna be so much better if you make it from scratch, right? We're gonna get our milk hot, then we're gonna add in some cream. Then we're gonna separate our eggs. We're gonna add egg yolks right back into the same container, cause why not? So we got our egg yolks in, and then we're gonna add one whole egg. Now we're going to add in our sugar. We're gonna give it a little mix. This is the part where you kinda wanna make sure you're getting the egg yolk and the sugar nice and pale almost. You wanna make sure you whip it until the color is a lot lighter because that means we're adding a lot of air into it, which is gonna make for a really nice and velvety pudding. So the pudding is gonna get cornstarch as well. This is a thickening agent. So the egg yolks and the cornstarch both play as thickeners in our pudding. And we're gonna mix this until it's like a paste. It resembles a paste and then we're gonna get cornstarch everywhere because where would it be if I wasn't making a mess right now? So this is the kind of consistency you're looking for. This is what that hot milk and cream is gonna go into. Okay, so I mean we love a sweet, brunch, but we need a little savory in there, so I'm gonna pop some bacon in the oven for later. It's gonna bake for about 25 minutes. While we're waiting for our cream to get hot, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare our toast for our French toast. I'm using brioche today. You can use challah, you can use whatever you feel like using. I personally love brioche. And for this recipe, you wanna make sure you're grabbing a loaf that is not sliced already because it's gonna be stuffed. And you wanna make sure you have enough room to actually pipe the pudding inside the French toast. So we're gonna go nice and thick slices. I mean, look at that. It smells so good. Okay, so something like this is perfect. It's the perfect slice right here. I'm gonna set this aside. All French toast needs a little bit of custard to soak up all of that creamy goodness. That's what pretty much makes French toast. So I'm gonna get into making that custard. We have some eggs in a bowl. I'm adding in some creamer and some heavy cream. I like to use coffee creamer because it has this nice sweetness and it makes a really great French toast custard. Into this, we are going to add in some cinnamon and nutmeg, of course. A little pinch of salt. Going in with some vanilla bean paste and just a little bit of honey. Fantastic. So we're gonna pour in our custard into something that we are going to be able to soak the toast into. So grab like a baking dish, a Pyrex or something like that, and just go ahead and transfer it into there. This looks so good. Like that's how you, look at all that flavor. Ooh, brown bits are all flavor. Our cream and our milk looks like it's nice and hot now. So what we're gonna do next is we're going to temper in this hot milk into the egg yolk. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a little mix. You wanna make sure you're moving at the same time or else you run the risk of cooking your eggs because it is eggs and they could get scrambled, which is something we don't want because then our pastry cream will be lumpy and just gross and not a vibe. And then I'm spilling stuff again because I'm making a mess all the time. Okay, cool. So now we're gonna go ahead and add in the tempered egg yolk mixture back into the pot. And then we're gonna cook this on medium low just until it gets nice and thick. So it's a major key to make sure you're continuing to get in the edges and in the corners of the pot because you can curl your egg in those areas. So you really wanna just make sure you're covering the whole surface area on the bottom. 
Banana pudding French toast, right? Like, who comes up with that? Somebody like me who thinks banana pudding is the perfect breakfast, but like brunch? It's giving, we gotta step it up a little bit. It's giving banana pudding and French toast are making a beautiful baby together. Here on Cooking with Tea and nowhere else. Let's go get into it. So right now is the perfect time to add in your vanilla. No flavors left behind. It's just how it was raised. You can scrape it or else you're not doing your job right. So at this point, you wanna add in your butter. So butter makes for a nice velvety banana pudding. Make sure you don't skip this. So now we need to cool our pudding mixture. So we're just gonna transfer it over into a bowl. And this is also gonna thicken up as it cools down. Before we put it away, you have to taste it. We have to taste everything every step of the way. All right, guys? Perfect. We're gonna cool this in the fridge. Now that our pastry cream is cool and in a piping bag, we're going to begin to stuff our French toast. We're gonna take our beautiful loaves and we're gonna just make an insert on the bottom of the bread, just like this. Be very careful when doing this, all right, y'all? I don't want you guys hurting yourself. You wanna make sure you give a nice, a nice pocket. Don't cut it all the way through and be very careful when you're doing this, all right? We're gonna take our knife and go like just until the edge right here. You don't wanna go too deep. We're going to begin to stuff our toast. So you wanna make sure you get a good amount of cream in there. You don't have to go crazy like I just did. A perfect little amount, not too much. Yum. Perfect. So you pretty much just want a nice surprise of the pudding inside the toast. You wanna to make sure like it's not overflowing and oozing of pudding because like it's gonna get dipped in that custard. It's gonna get coated with vanilla wafers. So don't be too greedy here, okay? Just give a, a little bit of pudding for the nice creamy effect and you'll be good. You're just pretty much gonna repeat this until all of your toast are stuffed with pudding. So we can't have banana pudding without vanilla wafers. I mean, that's what we're looking for. Each time we bite into the infamous banana pudding. So we're gonna crush this up and we're gonna coat our French toast inside that. How does that sound? Gas. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add our vanilla wafers into a bag. If you have a food processor at home, feel free to use that. If you have a blender, feel free to use that. But I'm doing this for the folks. They're just trying to have a good time. They don't have all that extra stuff. They're just trying to brush with tea and do the dang thing. So, I'm gonna make sure that all of the air is outside of the bag. You just wanna take a rolling pin, empty wine bottle, your fist, kinda just get into it. A little ASMR. Kids are going crazy for that these days. So when it comes to the crust and the crumb, you wanna make sure that they're all somewhat even because if some are larger than others, those may tend to cook faster or slower than other pieces. Remember that some of the smaller pieces might end up at the bottom of the bag. So it's nice to make sure it's like nice and flat. Just like this. Absolutely perfect. This is what we're going for right here. We're gonna take our cookie crumbs and we're just gonna put them into another dish and Take it out evenly, just like this. Yes. Now it's time to assemble. Okay, let's get into it. Let's use this one, perfect one first. So we're gonna go ahead and get into our custard. I'm gonna do a nice soak on both sides, just like that. You don't wanna soak it too long or else you risk it being soggy, which is something we don't want. So quickly on both sides, and then it's gonna go on top of vanilla wafers. And we're gonna repeat. You wanna make sure you're mixing the um, toast around in this custard because the cinnamon is gonna tend to all kind of gravitate towards each other. And you wanna make sure that you get some cinnamon and nutmeg on your toast, or else what are we doing it for? Yeah. This looks divine. And delicious. Last one. Lovely. Just like that. French toast is soaking. If you have any leftover custard, you could save it, pop it in the fridge. I mean, it's just gonna get even more delicious through time. 
So we're gonna go ahead and make sure both sides of our toast are coated and crunchy. We love a crunch. Yes. Yes. Yes! That looks so good. Are you kidding me right now? For the fun part, we're gonna start cooking our French toast. So I'm gonna get a non-stick pan, turn that heat up just a bit. Ooh, child. This toast is gonna be so good. All right, y'all, so we're gonna go ahead and start to cook our toast. I'm adding in a little bit of butter to the pan, because I mean, butter makes everything better. We know that. Getting nice and melty. Melty. I kinda wanna start out medium low with this because I don't want the cookies to burn before the toast is actually cooked and that custard is cooked through. And in the toast. Yeah. First toast is going in. Toast. I mean, yes. We want delicious brunch all the time. Checking out the bacon. Mmm, hmm. We love it. Maximize our time. I'm gonna start to slice our bananas. We're gonna take banana number one. And this is the healthy element of our brunch. Let me go ahead and give it a nice little check. Inside. Check our toasties. Not quite yet. I feel like we got about a few more minutes. We're gonna go ahead and flip that over. Oh my god, look at that. Yes! Can you can you tell how like the vanilla wafer crumbs just melted into the custard? Oh my god, look at that. That's gonna be so good. Okay, so our toast is cooking on the other side. We're gonna slice some bananas. Can I pop it back over here? How about I do this? Delish. Going in with some more butter. All right, y'all. Attempt number two. There we are. Let's get a little bit more crunch. All right. into it. We love a thick piece of bacon. The bacon's done, which is perfect because now that the French toast is cooking and the bacon's done, we're gonna let this rest and now we're gonna get into cooking our eggs. So right on time. That's how you manage your time. Nobody wants cold eggs when they eat brunch, right? Eggs happen last. Let that kick it for a second. Get back into our toast. We're gonna go ahead and do our last toast. Watch that one be the best one. It's always that way. The last one is always the best. Almost on this one. This is the one. That that big girl right there, that's that girl. Like, that's the one I'm gonna get into. So now that our toast is almost done, now we're gonna get into cooking our eggs, okay? Time management is key, especially if you're like hosting a little cute brunch party for the girlies. Like, you gotta make sure everything's hot. French toast is hot, bacon is hot, and eggs are hot. So. Egg pan is getting up to temperature. Let's crack some eggs. Always wanna make sure to season your eggs. A little salt, a little black pepper. Fresh black pepper. You'll never catch me using pre-bought pepper, ever, in your life. Give this a little whisk. I mean, that's how you know the eggs are gonna be good if they look just like this orange bowl. That's a real yolk. Only the realest here on Cooking with Tea. Get into it. So we're gonna add a little bit of butter to the pan. When I mean a little bit, I mean a lot of it. A good amount of butter. Toast looks perfect. So while we're waiting for the butter to melt and we're gonna cook our eggs, let's build our French toast. We're gonna add a little bit of whipped cream on the bottom of the plate because I mean banana pudding needs whipped cream or else it's not banana pudding. So a little schmear of whipped cream is gorgeous. Then we're gonna start with the ugly pieces of the toast on the bottom. We're gonna put this first, let's put the second, and then this will be our hero piece. Gorgeous, she is gorgeous. So now we're gonna cook our eggs. Gorgeous, let those do the thing. Back into banana pudding land. 
We're gonna add just a few dollops of pudding here and there, just for some more texture because it's delicious. We're gonna get into some bananas because that's why we're here, hello. And honestly, banana pudding, like, it has to be fresh bananas. Like, that sweetness and that freshness in this pudding is gonna come from the banana, so you don't really wanna, like, cook it down. You wanna make sure there's a nice pop of, like, sweetness that's also refreshing. She's gorgeous. Look at those eggs. There's one thing I know how to do, it's cook eggs. We're gonna go ahead and dust the French toast with a little bit of powdered sugar just a little bit of cinnamon. We can't have a little sweet without a little bit of savory, so we're gonna get into our eggs and our beautiful bacon. Well, let's get it. Beautiful bacon. Giving absolutely every brunch that we needed. Who knew we needed this? There it is. I'm gonna add a little bit more Nilla wafers right on top. Oh yeah. Y'all, is this happening right now? I mean, doesn't this French toast look amazing? We literally took banana pudding and French toast and made a delicious baby. Let's get into it. First things first, you're never gonna brunch with tea without a little mimosa action, okay? So, when it comes to mimosas and brunch and your amazing summer that you're having, uh, you wanna make sure you're using the right kind of bubble for your mimosa, right? You don't wanna go ball out on the Vouv Clico because like, we're gonna mix it with a little bit of OJ. So get yourself a nice little bottle of Cava or Prosecco. Your girls will love it. They won't even tell the difference. And I just corked this thing. We're gonna cut, we're gonna cut, we're cut. Cut. So we have our delicious Prosecco. This is the perfect amount. I'm showing you how to make a mimosa. You're gonna go Prosecco, Bubblation. I mean, there we are. There it is. A little fresh OJ. Literally, that much. That's it and that's all. That is the perfect mimosa. But let's get back to why we're really here, okay? We're gonna dig into our banana pudding French toast. I'm gonna take this beautiful, gorgeous piece. A few of those bananas, a little cream, for the moment of truth. Yes. Oh, delicious. You see that cream on the inside? I'm here for it. Is that the money shot? It's gonna be a money bite too. We're going in for the kill. That was not cute. Mmm. <laughs> Tastes cute though. This is delicious. This is the true essence of a collaboration dish, okay? Because you are tasting that banana pudding. Vanilla wafers add for the perfect texture on the outside of the French toast. We got the cream in the inside, the cream on the outside, the cinnamon and nutmeg is the perfect hint, like it's not overpowering and it's absolutely delicious. Mmm. Vanilla wafers on top. In other words, bust it. Okay, get into it. That's lovely as well. This might be my favorite part. <laughs> Just kidding! <laughs> Wait, let's not, get, let's not forget to get into this bacon. Yes. Yes! Wrap it up. Listen. That bacon is so good. I just wanna say, if brunch isn't looking or tasting anything like this this summer, don't invite me, okay? But this right here is the tea. Make sure you guys get into it. This recipe is a 10 out of 10. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and I hope you guys have an amazing brunch season. Cheers. Peace, love, and blessings.